Welcome back. Today is multimeter very basics. I'm going to show you how to use uh, voltage, amperage, and continuity uh, to troubleshoot or modify flashlights. This is the multimeter we'll be using today. Um, for voltage, we look over here on the left side, it says DC voltage. All batteries are DC, so uh, these markings 220, 200. You want to go just slightly above what you think your voltage is going to be. Uh, so we're going to turn to the 20 volt mark. And we have these two batteries. They look pretty similar. They're a similar size, but maybe we don't know what voltage they are. So just touch the leads to the ends of your battery and we get 1.29 volts, so this is a nickel metal hydride D-cell. Uh, this guy looks the same, but uh, we don't really have the markings on it. So, we touch it and we're 4.07, so lithium ion battery. If you happen to get the polarity wrong, no big deal. It just means that the, the meter will read negative volts. Look up here on the left. Now, if we had been on the wrong setting, if we had gone to 2 volts, basically all that would happen is the meter would max out like that. You see how it gives us that 1? That means uh, you're, you're over the range. We could go up to hundreds, but we'd just get a little bit less accurate of a reading. We lose a decimal point there. Also, with our voltage setting, if we have a flashlight and for some reason we're not getting any power, um, we have our batteries are installed here. I've got my 5,000 lumen drop in and two of the 26650s in here, but not getting any light. You know, I check, my head is snugged down the way it's supposed to be, the switch is on, but nothing's happening. So, uh, maybe maybe the bulb is no good, how do we know? Well, take this head off, and right here are both of our electrical contacts. In the center is positive, and then this whole outside ring where the bulb holder used to thread on is our negative. So we can stick this lead in here in the middle and push down on that. And then with our switch on, of course, we can stick this in there and touch this to the outside and we're, we're getting zero volts. With the switch in any position, we've got nothing. So that tells me either there's a problem in the switch or very more likely down here, okay? Um, the most common thing when you convert to the 26650s is trouble with this spring, okay? Uh, you have to remove the anodizing in the bottom of that cap and even though this one looks really great, like we got, we did a good job removing that anodizing, sometimes if the spring is not sitting down in there quite far enough or we didn't actually do a great job, uh, we won't get electrical contact. Uh, which brings us to the next setting on our multimeter, which is continuity. That is this this little thing right here that has like those little sound wave looking things. We switch to that, and if you touch the leads together, that is how you will know you have a continuous circuit, that there's no break where the electricity can't get across. What we need to do now is look for bare metal contacts. We've got that on the end of this spring and also right here around this edge is where the current will flow through the from here through the cap back up the body. So 
we'll take and we'll touch the spring here and this and I'm I'm getting nothing or sometimes it'll you know you might even gurgle a little bit okay and I've just I've got the spring sitting up high just to show you there um, but if we take push this down good sometimes even if they're pushed down and they look like everything's fine uh, what I do is just take a screwdriver around the edges push that spring down good make sure it's sitting flat even if it looked like it was good just make sure and then we'll try again we'll go here now we screw this back on turn our switch on and we'll try checking voltage again in here Oops. after we switch back to <laughs> the voltage we're gonna go with 20 volts because I'm expecting to get around 8 and up uh, that's no good we're getting only 3.72 volts so that's still not going to be enough power to run this head this is this is super rare usually what happens is you get about 8 volts, 8.4 volts on fully charged cells, but we're going to go, we're back at our voltage, and we're going to do this. We're going to go 3.8 volts there. Uh-oh. Zero volts. This is a pretty rare thing. I, I almost didn't put this in the video because it's so rare, but it does happen. One of our cells is giving us voltage. This one is not. I'm surprised we were able to get any voltage at the end of this at all. Usually once this happens, you get nothing. But what's happened is when I accidentally touched these leads to the end of this with in the continuity setting, I think I tripped the protection circuit in this. Uh, so it's giving us zero volts. The way to fix that is just to pop it back in the charger. Just for a second. That's all it takes. Now, 7.6 volts. Now when we thread our head on, snug it down. We're golden. One last little trick with our meter still set to continuity is you can test any 3 volt LED to see if it's good with this uh, just by putting your positive lead to the positive and negative to negative it has enough voltage to light up uh, you know an XPG XPL it won't work with a 6 volt but it's an easy way to know if your emitter is the problem in a situation amperage this one this one can be a little bit more tricky but really it's not that hard all right for this we're switching to my other multimeter because unfortunately the amperage setting on the first one doesn't work <laughs> so uh, what we're gonna do is this we have amperage here on on the first multimeter it's over here it, we have 200 milliamp or 10 amp like I said my this meter is not working in that setting uh, we're going to go let's just start with the 200 milliamp um, we, we can test uh, low powers with that, and so we're going to try the low mode on this 5,000 lumen bulb. And all we need to do 
is instead of putting the tail cap on, normally the tail cap completes this circuit. It runs from here to here. Uh, we're just going to complete that circuit using the multimeter leads. We're going to put one right here on this and one right there. And it's hard to see, but the light does power on. And we're getting 190 milliamps on that low power. Now, if we want to switch modes, we can do that. Uh, we're just going to use the multimeter leads like the switch. We're just going to lift up and let off. And you see we jumped up. But when we do that, we go out of range. So what we need to do is jump up to the next one. We want to go up to this 10 amps here, but... When we do that, we get nothing. And that's because we need to move this lead over here. This is the 10 amp range. These cheap meters like this, uh, they're, they're not going to be good for measuring high current. Um, they're going to give you a very low reading. And so if you're going to use a meter like this for that, you need to have heavier leads than this, or you're, it, it's just not going to be right. So what I use is, this is just a like a super heavy gauge wire that I have. And I'm just going to put these in as my leads. I'm just going to plug it in here. Here. So now you can see we can measure, you know, 5 amps is about right. These batteries are not fully charged. So most of the cycle, that's what I expect to get out the gate with this bulb. It's more like uh, 7 amps, but this is, this is correct. Alternatively, what we can do is use a clamp meter, and I like this much, much better. These are very, very good to have. Um, Instead of using the leads, you just clip this around a wire, and it'll give you a reading. Pretty accurate, much easier to use. Um, the way we do this one, uh, you want to, just like before, uh, you want to turn on to just above what you think your current is going to be. So we're going to turn to the uh, 20 amp setting. Um, this meter's default setting is to be AC. We need to be DC, so we're going to hit that button. And then we're going to zero out. If it doesn't stay all the way zero, if it goes to one or whatever, that's fine. Now what we need to do is complete our circuit, either using just a short piece of wire or, you know, a piece of metal, something to replace the the spring right about 5 amps now we're getting away with just testing at the end of this and th in this case this is accurate because this bulb uses a linear driver which means the uh, what's coming out of the battery is the same thing, the same voltage, the same amperage that is hitting the LED. And that's going to be true for uh, any linear drivers like uh, the these little green ones, the 7135 boards, Q light, 105C, whatever you want to call them, um, or also the MOSFET drivers. However, if we're using a buck or boost driver, that's not going to be true. You know, this this driver looks similar because it's green, but that's that's where the similarities end, okay? Um, this is a 3-volt LED, a Cree XPL, but uh, we're going to use two lithium-ion batteries in here, which is um, it, what's considered a 6-volt setup. So 3-volt LED, 6-volt battery setup. Now watch watch what happens when we test this one. Here's our two batteries. We'll hook up the negative to the driver. We'll put
put this little box over the LED so we don't get blinded. Now, we're going to test from the tail end by putting our clamp meter over that. We're getting uh, 1.69 amps, 1.7 at the tail. But that's not how much power we're getting at the emitter. To find out how much power we're actually getting at the, the emitter, what we have to do is clamp somewhere in f on this side of the driver. Instead of between the driver and the batteries, we're going to clamp between the driver and the LED. And you can see we're getting almost double. 2.7 amps is where we're getting 1.7 well not double but you see what I mean we're getting a lot higher a full amp more so if you're using a buck driver just make sure that uh, you test your current in the correct location well gang I hope this has been educational uh, if you were able to follow this and you learned something give it a thumbs up let me know in the comments section as always guys thanks for watching good lucks